we are marking the start of Breast Cancer Awareness Month with a story that hits close to home. Yeah, our friend Katie Couric is with us. She has long been a cancer advocate using her platform, platform, including her time here at Today, to inform and educate the public. Well, now she's gone from cancer advocate to cancer survivor. Last week, in a personal essay on the Katie Couric Media website, she wrote, June 21st was the first day of summer, my eighth wedding anniversary, and the day I found out I had breast cancer. Like more than a third of women, Katie was not up to date on her annual screening, writing, had the pandemic given me a skewed sense of time? Had it messed with my memory? Six months overdue, Katie went in for a mammogram and a breast ultrasound. Noting something suspicious in her left breast, her doctor did a biopsy, and it was cancer. After having a lumpectomy and 15 days of radiation, Katie is sharing her story to educate others and once again save lives. In 2000, two years after her husband Jay Monahan died of colon cancer, Katie aired her own colonoscopy right here on Today. As a result, there was a 20% increase in screenings, what the University of Michigan dubbed the Couric Effect. Katie, that smile right here, please. Now, she's on a mission again. And she's right here with mm -hmm. us. Hi, Katie. Hi. So Hi. Good to see Look you. at us all in pink. We, are. Are. Yeah. we got the memo. It mm -hmm. is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I, the first question has to be how you're mm -hmm. feeling. How are you doing? I'm feeling great. Um, I'm just getting over a cold. That's why mm -hmm. I wouldn't give you all a hug this morning <laughs> to protect you. But I'm feeling just fine. You know, I finished radiation last week. They said it made you tired. I was actually not too tired from it. I had a lumpectomy in July. And my next stop, I go on something called aromatase inhibitors, which suppress estrogen because I have a, uh, a, a hormone receptor positive, HER2 new negative mm -hmm. tumor that they removed when I had my lumpectomy. But I just feel super lucky that it was diagnosed when it was, that I went even though I was late, that I went when I did. Can you take us back? Because I think, I mean, you are a cancer advocate, obviously, but it's a whole different ball game when you go in. You think you, you missed your mammogram by six months, which is probably like most people at home right now. Yeah. So you went in for, for your checkup. Tell us about that moment. Well, I went in with my, with my phone camera, and yeah. I was going to share it with my followers and people who read my newsletter and go to the website to say, don't forget, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I don't want you all to. So when my radi breast radiologist, Susan Drossman, said, can you turn off your phone? Mm. I was like, uh-oh, what does that mean? And she said, I think there's something we really need to biopsy, and I want to do it today. Mm. So I thought, oh, my God, you must be kidding me. And then when she, I found out the next day she called me, I was, I was pretty stunned. And I think those words, it's cancerous or you have mm -hmm. cancer, do stop you in your tracks. But... She told me it was treatable. We needed to have a plan. Mm -hmm. So I went from feeling shocked to not that shocked, given my family's history, and the you know, and to relieved because my exposure to cancer with Jay and Emily and my mother-in-law Carol Monahan, mm -hmm. you know, they were all advanced, and the prognosis was really tough. So I felt so grateful, honestly, and that's why I am so thrilled to be able to talk to you all about the importance of screening. And I know, Hoda, you know about that, because Hoda and I had, you know, you have or so, had the same kind of tumor I had when you were in your well, 40s. When you talk about early detection, it was so funny, because when I, when I was diagnosed here, I remember I sat with Corvo, David Corvo, and I told him what had happened, and he said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, okay. He said, I know a lot of friends who have breast cancer, and they all have one thing in common. And I said, what's that? He said, they're still here. And that was about, just like for you and for me, too, once you get the early detection, some of it, then it just becomes, now it's medical. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And there have been so many strides made. Yeah. Um, but, but like, I mean, as you said, a third of all women, I didn't even know that number, didn't get screened mm -hmm. during COVID. And a lot of screening places shut down. Mm -hmm. I think our the cadence of our lives changed. And I think we just got off track. And that happened to me as well. Before mm -hmm. we get into some of the particulars, because I know you are mm -hmm. a woman on a mission and you have mm -hmm. a really important message, I just, I immediately thought of Carrie and Ellie, mm -hmm. your daughters. They're in their 20s now. Yeah, I Ellie's think. 31, if okay. you can believe oh, it. Oh, my well, gosh. But they have, you know, they experienced so much loss yeah. at a young age. Um, yes. You know, their father, their mm -hmm. grandmother, their aunt. 
and I'm sure it was that was a hard call to make, even knowing that you you know had a really good mm -hmm. prognosis. Yeah, it, well, I was nervous about it. I waited a few days so I could process it and really understand what we were dealing with, and I FaceTime each of them. Mm -hmm. And Ellie's in L.A., and Carrie never calls me back. So I basically had to on both of them. She's here in New York. And, and I told them, but I was very reassuring, mm -hmm. but I saw on their faces, you know, it's just hard to deliver that news no matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I assured them that I was going to be fine, and Carrie came with me when I mm -hmm. got my lumpectomy. When I was being wheeled into the operating room, she was singing The Arms of an Angel. Aww. Oh, my God. Sweet. <laughs> no, she's so funny. <laughs> but anyway, but they've been incredibly supportive. And, and, of course, I was worried about that. But, again, just so grateful that they caught it early enough so it could be treated. Mm -hmm. And, by the way, yeah. you know, even when it's a later stage than mine, I'm stage 1A, there are so many treatments available, and a lot of women are living with breast cancer, but we need to do better. We need to come up with better treatments, and we need to get more women screened. I was surprised, y'all, only 70% of women actually get breast cancer screening, wow. and that number went down to 65% during the pandemic, but I think it's probably went even lower. Here's, some, here's a weird thing that we just saw on the American Cancer Society website. It says, and I think we have a graphic, women 55 and over should switch to mammograms every two years. They're kind of giving you that window. You don't need to go each year. You can go every two. Yeah, I mean, Your I thoughts? think that the recommendations have been all over the map. I, I mean, I'm not a doctor, and I'm trying not yeah. to play one on TV, <laughs> but... But, you know, I think people should go every year. You yeah. should talk to your doctor. I think yeah. women have to advocate for their own health, and that's why I'm so... Um, you know, so excited to be able to talk about dense breasts mm -hmm. in particular. I wanted to yeah. ask you about yeah. that because you were someone that you learned you have dense breasts. First of all, what does that mean? Yeah. I thought I knew. I just asked you. You're like, no, that's not it. Yeah. And what does that mean in terms of mm -hmm. the kind of screening you need? Well, this is my main message, so thank you for asking that. It's 45 to 50 percent of women in this country have what are considered dense breasts. This is not something you can tell by feeling mm -hmm. your breasts. If your breasts are lumpy, it doesn't necessarily mean you have dense breasts. It's mm -hmm. indicated on a mammogram. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask your radiologist, or your radiologist ideally should be telling you you have dense mm -hmm. breasts. And then you often need secondary screening. So my radiologist compared it to trying to find snowballs in a field of snow. Mm. I got a 3D mammogram, which mm. is definitely superior to standard mammograms. And my, my breast radiologist, Susan Drossman, said it was, made it much easier for her to see it. But it was key to get a breast ultrasound to confirm that I had a tumor that needed to be biopsied. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women don't know this. 38 states require doctors to say, hey, Hoda, you have dense breasts, but your mammogram is fine. So what are you supposed to do with that information? Yeah. You don't necessarily know you need additional screening. And by the way, insurance doesn't yeah. necessarily pay for that additional yeah. ultrasound So two screening. issues, yeah. First, with the notification, Savannah. So the FDA said the language needs to change all states mm -hmm. need to require notification with much more specificity about what you're supposed to do with that information. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're right, only 14 states in the district require insurance to pay some or all of breast ultrasound wow. screening for women with dense breasts. And often the, the reimbursement is very mm -hmm. small. So I've been working with Congressman Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut, and she's introducing legislation this month that would require insurance companies to cover no, no, uh, you know, cost on the patient mm. breast ultrasounds for women who have dense breasts because it's criminal. All these breast cancer diagnoses mm -hmm. would happen much earlier mm -hmm. if, in fact, women with dense mm. breasts had breast ultrasounds. Wow. You're already, so have you already spoken to the congresswoman that's already on the move? Yeah. <laughs> not surprised you know us what? in the least. Guys, she's yeah. on a mission, so yeah. just go but, ahead and do what but, she asked. But I just really want women yeah, to get screened. Yeah. Don't yes. put it off. Yes. And I've yes. heard from so many who said, your story made me make my appointment. Yes. Yep. But also, if you have dense breasts, find out what more you need to do. do. You, will your kids do any genetic testing? Do you want yes. them to? Yes, well, Ellie already has. Oh. Mm -hmm. And what's also, I'm so glad you asked okay. me this too, because I've been, you know, learning yeah. and reporting on this myself. So basically, you know, used to look for the BRCA gene, yeah. BRCA1 yeah. or BRCA2, which you could increase your risk of breast cancer up to 80%, but the panel has increased to almost 
30, or I think more than 30 gene mutations wow. that give you a slightly higher risk, sometimes as high as 40% higher for breast cancer. Genetic testing has gone into the mainstream. Uh -huh. Insurance companies cover it, and it really is a great tool to help you understand what you need to do vis-a-vis yeah. -vis screening mm -hmm. and how often you need to do it. Mm -hmm. And you should be having a conversation with your health care provider about breast cancer mm -hmm. as early as 25, just to start mm -hmm. the conversation. And black women have a 40% higher mortality mm -hmm. rate. So if you're black or you have Ashkenazi mm -hmm. Jew heritage, you should start discussing it at age 30 because it might change your screening protocol. Okay, wow. you had such an impact earlier yeah. in your career yeah. after Jay's passing, mm -hmm. and I believe you'll have that mm -hmm. impact. Well, again. I we hope have so. our homework mm -hmm. cut out for us. Did. I did make my appointment. Mm -hmm. Good, after hearing yeah. about good, last week. good. I'm so, so yeah. glad. Yeah. I'm cool. so glad because I really, I just want to mm -hmm. share what I've learned mm -hmm. with other women and hopefully keep them healthy and happy. Well, we love you, Katie. We're well, happy thank you. Here. I feel thank like you. I, I, you I feel like my little textbook is going in here. But I, I've really studied this, and yeah. and uh, I have yeah. the the facts to back it up. Cool. But thank you for having me. Thank honestly. you, Katie. We We're adore delighted you. to have you and looking so good and feeling well. <laughs> thank you. Important. I'm getting there. Still a little sniffly. But I'm better. <laughs> we might hug you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.